All righty, we are live and um, I am just uh, going to give folks a minute or two to get on here, but if you have already tuned in, um, I am joined today um, by Chelsea and Pat's accredited facility dog Sonar, and uh, we're just going to give folks a few minutes to log in and um, but in the meantime, I'm going to explain if you are watching live stream, if you're watching on Facebook Live, if you have questions for us, you can type those right into the comment section. If you are watching on Zoom, um, you'll notice behind my head here the Q&A box. That's the button you're looking for. Um, uh, you can click on that if you have a question. But in the meantime, tell us where you are watching from. So hop on uh, Facebook comments or click that chat button and just tell us where you're tuning in from. And also if you have a special connection to Miss Sonar um, in terms of uh, some history uh, with her as well. So we always like to know who is watching. So with that, um, just give me one second because I always bring up our Facebook Live on my phone so I can see the questions there and it's just being a little glitchy. So just give me one second and then we will get going, but it just gives people another minute here to jump on. Okay, why, why is it being glitchy? What is happening? Sorry folks, just give me a second. For reasons, oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, we will uh, show you Sonar in a minute here. But Chelsea, I am going to start by asking you the question I ask everybody at the beginning of these um, little sessions, which is, sure. how did you come to be part of the Pads Village? And what yeah. brought you to us? Okay, well, I guess it started with the general love of dogs. <laughs> um, so I work um, as a youth care worker in an elementary school. Um, and before the pandemic hit, I guess um, I used to always take a group of my students to a local farm. And often the farm dog was the most exciting mm -hmm. part for students. Um, and on farm days, the children would thrive. Um, and so it got me thinking about, you know, including the therapeutic capacity of our furry friends and including a dog into my practice. Um, I was talking to my sister-in-law about this one day, and she happens to live down the street from one of the breeder caretakers and had started doing some um, advanced dog sitting uh, on the weekends. And she told me about the accredited facility uh, program. And uh, yeah, I think I applied that night. <laughs> it would take me long to apply. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right. So um, with that, um, I, I see that our numbers just spiked in like the 30 seconds that we were just talking <laughs> about that. So we've got a bunch of new people that are watching. Welcome, everyone. We are here with Chelsea and Pad's accredited facility dog, Sonar, who maybe we can catch a glimpse at her snoring. Uh, she's she having working... uh, quite the snooze right now. She's at work, so she's having a nice little break. <laughs> you might she's hear her snoring. <laughs> you see her there? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, <laughs> and welcome to everyone who's joined. I see uh, Joanne and Kelly and KW and Michelle and Sarah and Lise and all sorts of folks uh, have kind of tuned in here. So we're so glad everybody is here. Um, with that, if you have questions for uh, Chelsea and Sonar or uh, myself, and I'm always bad at this, um, my name is Tara. Um, I am uh, the Marketing Communications Manager at PADSA, and this is one of the very best parts of my job is getting to meet our new teams and introduce them uh, to our community. So uh, Sonar and Chelsea were recently matched. So let's start off by share a little bit about your organization and the work that you do, Chelsea, before we talk about the work that Sonar does. Sure. What do you do and what's your role? Yeah, so, um, well, Sonar actually works with me at two facilities, but I work um, as a youth care worker in an elementary school. Um, and I primarily support uh, students with social or emotional challenges or behavioral challenges, as well as um, mental health struggles. 
Um, and then I work as a counselor outside in a counseling office outside of the school as well. And I work with um, children and youth and um, adults. Wonderful. And, and so with that, um, we, we often talk about our accredited facility dogs and the role that they play. And, you know, it's often surprising to our new teams that they're like, oh, a dog's going to help me do my dog, my job better. And sometimes those dogs come in and surprise them and do the job in a completely different way and do things that they're not able to do. Tell us a little bit about Sonar and the role that she plays with your students and how does it change the work that you do? Mm -hmm. So Sonar um, offers this incredible calming presence. Um, she has proven to be um, a vehicle for starting kind of relaxed conversations with, with um, some even hard to reach youth. Um, she offers um, a, a warm and welcoming greeting to students. Um, she helps to support um, reluctant readers. She, she's read to daily. Um, yeah, and she can also be a wonderful distraction for um, people who maybe are talking about really hard things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about her personality. I mean, I know her, but for our viewers, tell, her, <laughs> tell those that are watching what she's like personality wise. Because right now we oh. see snoozing sonar. Right? Yes, you see this. So <laughs> here, I'll put her back in the spotlight a little bit. She is incredibly calm. Um, however, I, I will say she, I get to see, I think mostly, but um, she has a very playful side to her as well. Um, she can, she, she gives quite a good tail wag when she's meeting, especially familiar people, people that I see on a regular basis, um, very friendly that way. Um, but mostly she's very chill. She's very chill. Um, when she is finished work, I often get to see her more playful side. Uh, so she loves to um, go for walks and it is hard, almost impossible to keep her out of water. So if we are walking anywhere where there's water, she will try and go for a swim. <laughs> Well, I mean, she did come from the navigation letter, so. Okay, yeah, sonar. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, gosh. So, yeah, she's, she's playful, you know, that way and, and will sometimes bring me um, toys in her mouth. Yeah. And, uh, but at work, she she's incredibly chill, as you can That's see here, fantastic. using away. <laughs> so we have a question from Joanne, and I think it's a really important question. So Joanne asked, is she a registered service dog or a therapy dog? And so what I want to explain is just, she's actually neither. And so um, she is in a different category. So, but to explain about sonar, I need to explain the difference between all three categories. So a service dog would be a dog that helps someone that is um, disabled in some way. Um, and so we have um, PTSD service dogs that help folks um, that have uh, disabilities related um, uh, to uh, kind of traumatic stress injuries, often workplace um, injuries. And so um, we also have mobility service dogs that help people that are physically disabled. And so for those of you that have been watching for a while, you've met Cadence, who is my mobility service dog that does physical tasks um, to support disability. And so those dogs are considered certified service dogs through our program. Therapy dogs are typically um, certified by an agency like St. John's Ambulance or BC Pets and Friends. They don't have any necessarily professional training. They're really, really nice, um, even tempered, stable dogs that have been temperament tested to know that they're going to be safe and reliable around people and can provide care. Um, and so it may sound very similar, but what makes Sonar different is she's an accredited facility dog. And so what that means is is accredited facility dogs are purpose bred. That's the first thing. So they are bred not just to be able to go in and be a lovely, um, warm, uh, 
kind of dog in an environment uh, like the one Chelsea works in. But she also has the resilience to do that job full time and have it not take a toll on her. Um, so like not everyone could do Chelsea's job. Um, I certainly could not. Um, I am uh I am not hardwired um, to be in a profession that requires uh, that level of um, skill and also, I think, resilience to be able to kind of come in and work in tough situations day in, day out. And so um, accredited facility dogs, one, we purpose breed them to be very, very resilient, um, but also we choose them. So out of all of the dogs that we breed, um, we look at them as they become young adults and determine their career path. So we want to see an aptitude that they are drawn to people that maybe are having big emotions or feelings. They don't shy away from that. Um, but also very, very important is they have the natural ability to also shake that off at the end of the day. And um, we can ask Chelsea about this in a second, but I know some of our AFD clients have talked about the fact that you know, when they've had a really emotional, heavy day and a lot of clients and a lot of things going on, they are bonkers at the park and they like to do zoomies or chase their frisbee. Whereas if they've had a really quiet day at work, they might just noodle around and sniff. But we do look for a dog's ability to also unload their stress um, because we want them to be really successful long-term in their role. Um, and not every dog is. Some dogs are great at the job, but they, they don't have that ability to kind of unload it. Um, and a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. So um, the second piece is, is that they've had two plus years of professional training. So um, they come in, they work with our puppy raisers through their socialization period and their young adulthood um, supported by our staff. Um, so they go out in the community, they're socialized to every possible environment you can think of. They go to stores and movie theaters and festivals and um, doctor's visits and all those kinds of things, which prepares them for whatever career path they're going to be on. Um, but then it also lays a really nice foundation for being in an environment like Chelsea's in where you're at a school and there's a lot going on and noises and hallways full of children and stuff that most uh, pet dogs would not have been kind of raised with. So dealing with crowds and noise and unexpected things is really important. And so it's that combination of training and purpose breeding that makes an accredited facility dog different than a therapy dog. Both have very important roles in our community. Um, and also typically the accredited facility dogs are full-time placements. So they work, you know, like most of us grown-ups, 37 and a half hours a week or, or so. And um, as opposed to just maybe popping into a senior center on a weekend or an evening for a couple of hours, um, it's a full-time gig. So um, do you want to talk just for a second about that, Chelsea? Like, what does it look like for Sonar when she has a, a tough day or a big day? And, and, and also, um, how is the an accredited facility dog also important within kind of your environment as opposed to a therapy dog? Hmm, yeah, so typically sonar, um, I, I say, I think after kind of a full tough day at work, she tends to sleep, fall asleep right away on our drive home. Um, and then often um, she goes for a walk with me. So she, she, you know, we go on a forest walk, she burns off some steam. And I think that helps to get out, get out that energy and helps her to relax. But um, she's often in the car after work and asleep before we leave the parking lot. <laughs> she usually has a, a short nap on the job too, during her break time, just like she's doing now. Yeah. And so. sleep is so important. It's interesting. We talk about our baby puppies. If you do a training session with them and then you pop them in their crate um, for a little bit and let them have a nap, they actually learn faster if you give them a nap after training than if you don't, um, because sleep mm. is really important for their brains. And so like with humans, obviously. So um, that is very cool. I did want to say, so Lisa, uh, I Lisa trained sonar, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, and sorry, Lisa, come in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't want to miscredit. 
Um, but um, Lisa says hello. And so I'm just going to remind folks that are watching, we've got a lot of people watching live. If you have questions, you're on Facebook Live, you can pop them in the quest, uh, the comment section. But if you are on Zoom, just click that Q&A button, either at the bottom of your screen, or if you're on mobile, it's usually in the top right. There's some little dots you can click <clears> on. <throat> oh, and Lisa says, yes, she was um, Sonar's trainer. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad I got it right. Um, but um but with that, um, tell me what an average day looks like for Sonar. Sure. Um, so at the school, um, she often starts out with a warm uh, welcome greeting to students and staff. Um, she's also a staff favorite around here. <laughs> um, and then she usually starts off in my office while uh, students kind of float in and out to connect with both myself and Sonar now. Um, sometimes she walks students to class and uh, she will sometimes stay in the classroom with, with students as they're kind of settling in um, to the classroom. Um, and then she, she reads with, with students every day or she is read to, I guess I should say. <laughs> we haven't um, trained reading dogs yet. Yes. <laughs> She's also um, in the afternoons available for special breaks. Um, we get lots of visitors kind of coming down to see her in the afternoon. Um, and sometimes she she helps out with um, kind of special things that are happening in the school. So for example, one that just comes to mind was um, the our grade six students had their immunizations. And um, she was a very, very calm presence there oh, um, for the students. So sometimes there's there's special things happening in the school, but yeah. yeah. So you and, you touched on something that I think is really important because it's it's let's call it a secondary benefit, but it's something I think that um, sometimes catches folks off guard um, when a new dog is coming into a brand new agency or organization is the impact on staff. And yes. um, tell us a little bit about that and, and how the impact that Sonar's had on the rest of the team around you. You know, she brings so much joy to the staff in this building. Well, in both the buildings that I work in. Mm -hmm. um, she has, she's been here with staff when students aren't in the building and we have professional development days and, you know, teachers, support staff, principal are down on the floor with her, you know, um, petting her, playing with her. Um, and she just, she, she brings so much joy to staff members um, around here for sure. <clears throat> brings smiles to people's faces. Well, and oh my gosh, there is, teachers are extraordinary and they have very I hard agree. jobs and very enormous oh. jobs. So how Absolutely. incredible is that? Yes. Uh, one yes. of our other AFD clients said every school needs a dog. And, um, oh, and I, I agree. 100% agree. So I, yes, absolutely. Every school needs a dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> Meredith was just asking, does Sonar have a favorite, uh, uh, toy or treat that she loves? Does she have favorites? Well, uh, let me say she's not very um, picky about which kinds of treats she gets. <laughs> she likes them all. Um, her favorite toy, um, she has this, this stuffed kind of house stuffy that she got for Christmas that she seems to carry around a fair bit in her mouth or bring to me. Um, and yeah, I would say that's, probably her favorite toy. That's very yeah. cool. <laughs> um, Michelle is just asking, um, she, she lives in Saskatchewan and knows uh, Merlot in Regina and Kane that was in Moostra and now Sven lives in Moostra. And she's just wondering, um, how long did you train with pads and sonar um, before you kind of went to work together? What did, what did team training look like in the matching process? Mm. Team training. So I guess I first got to meet Sonar in August. Um, and yeah, so we actually haven't been together all that long. Um, and 
school started in September. So uh, we were, yeah, maybe a few weeks anyways, doing our team training together. Yeah. And, and for those that are watching, our team training typically involves a couple of components. There's some online learning, but obviously some hands-on learning. Mm -hmm. um, we really want to ensure that our clients um, feel supported. And I think the other piece too is that um, you know, when we were talking earlier about the difference between accredited facility dogs and therapy dogs is that um, with an accredited facility dog like Sonar, um, PADS supports Sonar and Chelsea throughout their entire working career and, you know, even into retirement. Like, I know officially once the dog retires, ownership transfers and such, but um, but I also know from my history working with pads that, you know, once a pads dog, always a pads dog. And when there's been, you know, sometimes tough stuff um, as dogs get older, uh, our support uh, continues um, even in retirement to a certain degree. So um, that's the other piece is there's that initial training. Um, Sonar came with all of her skills. She knew all of her things. Uh, she had to pass all sorts of tests before we placed her with Chelsea. But then Chelsea has to come in and, and and basically learn how to drive the car. And so um, yes. learn all of the cues and how to build relationship and connection and all that good stuff. So yeah, a really definitely. important piece of, of the puzzle for our team. I was very worried, um, I must say, about messing it up. <laughs> we're just starting to we're, we enter our groove now, but I, I was, yeah. I have to admit, <laughs> I think that's very common, uh, Chelsea. I've heard that from many. Yeah. I have a weird advantage in that I uh, knew uh, my my girl from the time she was a baby. Um, and so I was less, that was not as much of a worry. And yet in a weird way, it was very interesting to transition into a new role and kind of figure out what that looks like. And so, um, but again, the mm -hmm. PADS team, the training team is simply extraordinary at kind of supporting through all of those mm -hmm. weird transitions and challenges. Absolutely. So um, that is a big part of, you know, our program. And so often um, for donors that are watching, you know, we talk about puppy sponsorship or team sponsorships and things. Anytime somebody donates or gives to PADS, that's not just about getting the dog to placement. That is about supporting that team throughout their working life. And, um, you know, if Chelsea's job changed or there were new challenges or, you know, I think about when COVID hit, you know, we mm -hmm. were trying to put together support materials to send out to our AFD clients around, you know, information about, you know, our dog's vectors of transmission and what are the best practices and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so those kinds of things, we kind of roll with the punches and, but there might also be changes to Chelsea's job and environment or new things she wants Sonar to be able to do. And so we're there kind of through all of that. So I'm realizing we're getting close to time. This has been the best conversation and it just kind of zoomed by. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put out one last call to folks um, that are watching. Um, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can type any questions you have in the comment section, or if you're watching on Zoom and you have a question, just click that little Q&A icon that you see um, in the top left there behind my head. Um, well, don't click that one. Click the one on your Zoom module that looks like that and uh, and let us know what your questions are. Otherwise, we will start to wrap up here. Um, I do want to highlight a couple of things as we're kind of signing off. So one is mm -hmm. dogs like Sonar, um, the estimate is that, you know, from you know, breeding and training and all that kind of stuff through placement and supporting uh, them through their working life is about a $35,000 investment. And so donations make the world go round. Um, these dogs are provided free of charge to our clients, um, thanks to our generous donors. So if anybody wants to donate to PADS, we always appreciate that. And it's just um, pads.ca slash uh, give or donate, um, either one of those will work, or just go to pads.ca, there's a big green button there you can click on. But the other thing is, is that um, dogs like Sonar wouldn't happen without extraordinary volunteers that um, love on them. And so, um, Sonar was raised by a couple of, uh, a couple of families. Um, she was sponsored by our wonderful friends in the Okanagan Total Pet and um, raised by Sheree and Mike and Lynn and Gary. And those folks have poured their heart and souls into this dog um, as she went through all 
all of the crazy stages the puppy's go through <laughs> doing things and getting sick and being up in the middle of the night and all those things um, really preparing her for that next stage. And so if you have ever considered um, volunteering for pads, we are anxiously looking for puppy raisers right now. So folks that will raise a puppy um, in our community, we're also looking for breeder caretakers. So all that information you can find at pads.ca slash volunteer. And, um, and oh, Joanne's just asking about the application process. So I will answer that really quickly. Um, so there's a few stages to it. We want to make sure um, that you qualify for our program. And so PADS only places accredited facility dogs um, with not-for-profit um, kind of placements. Um, so um, in situations, for example, um, like schools or victim services, government agencies, things like that. Um, so we don't uh, typically place in for-profit placements. Um, and um, also, we're looking for a handler that understands that this is, you know, you're looking for a dog that is going to work with you for eight to 10 years. And so that's a long term commitment. And so there, there's multiple pieces to the puzzle. So also, um, there's typically an agency component as well. So there's an agreement with the handler. There's also an agreement with the agency so that everybody's clear. For example, if Chelsea were to change jobs, what happens to Sonar? We try to have all those conversations at the front end. Um, and so both the agency and PADS and Chelsea all kind of understand um, how decisions are made. And um, we didn't touch on this, but Sonar is owned by PADS um, and currently, um, you know, lives with Chelsea. And when she eventually retires, will retire to Chelsea. Um, but we maintain ownership. And part of that is ensuring that, um, that the best decisions continue to be made for Sonar throughout um, the rest of her life. Um, and also just a show of our commitment uh, to Chelsea too. So, um, oh my goodness, all the questions. So that's the Coles Notes version. If you want more information about our application process, if you go to pads.ca slash apply, there's information there as well. Um, so you kind of submit um, an, an initial um, registration. And then um, when we're accepting full applications to our wait list, uh, we send you a link to do that. Um, and then we review that there's an interview process, etc. Um, and then we go about trying to match the perfect dog um, that is a good match for the handler's lifestyle, personality, etc, as well as the job placement. So um, the, here's one for you, Chelsea, and this is going to be our last question um because i know we're almost at time and so kw is asking i'd like to know how sonar would react to a student that is having an extra tough emotional day <clears throat> would she go and sit beside that person what would that look like mm, yeah so of course sonar safety is always my the, the top priority so there are situations where perhaps a student is very dysregulated where you know, I need to keep sonar safe, of course. Um, however, I will say that sonar is very attuned to, to people's emotions, it seems. Um, so yes, when there is some more intense emotions or, or people are crying, um, many times sonar has uh, placed a chin on a lap um, or gone up um, actually, when I was walking down the hallway, this was just last week, um, she heard a student crying before I, I did, and she was kind of pulling towards to go into our resource room. And so I, I went in there with her and she went straight up to a student who was sobbing. And so that, that she heard before I did. So yeah, she's, she's oh, uh, seems to be very in tune with people's emotions yeah. and they don't scare her. Yeah. And it's always interesting too. like these dogs are so well trained, but this is not the first time on a tune in Tuesday someone shared about and, you know, we call that intelligent disobedience. So when the dog is, you know, pulling to go in yes. a certain direction, they know what their job is. Um, and sometimes, you know, even though they're trained to walk beautifully on leash that um, when they identify that there's a need that is part of their job that they, they kind of say, um, excuse me, I know better here. Yeah. So um, <laughs> right. and we love that about them. So um, what a good girl. Well, Chelsea, this has been such <clears throat> an utter pleasure um, to see you, you both so and catch up with you. And um, we uh, 
the lovely Meredith, um, who uh, works on our team here, has um, scheduled out a whole bunch of really great interviews coming up. So be sure, uh, those of you watching, um, if you go to pads.ca slash tune in Tuesday, there's hyphens in there. Um, you can see kind of what is up and coming. Um, but um, we're going to have, I think, probably some puppies in the mix and some other clients coming down the pike. Um, but again, just a one more plug of like, go to pads.ca slash volunteer um, or donate um <clears throat> to kind of help support our program in other ways <clears throat> and i'm sorry i now have a tickle in my throat but thank you again chelsea and uh and sonar even though we snored through the whole thing we love <laughs> you. <laughs> she did so thank cute. you so much for having us oh it's been such a pleasure take care have a great day you too take care bye